All right, welcome back to the big board. I know it's uh, been a, a minute since I have had a chance to sort of sit down and talk about feedback on games that I've been playing in bits and pieces. So I thought this morning I'd cover something a little bit different. Uh, Oak and Iron from Firelock Games. I, I had re uh, reached out to the company back uh, well, several months ago to ask about the RPG they've got coming out, which looks very, very interesting. It's called War Stories. And uh, I, I, th I think that'll be coming out in the next, in the coming months. And uh, through a conversation, uh, I ended up with a very pleasant uh, surprise of them sending me Oak and Iron. And uh, also some of the expansions, the Ships of the Line, this is very cool. Blackbeard's Revenge, right? And uh, then a, a Gentleman of Fortune, which has two or three different ships in it. So each each little expansion box, which by the way, the boxes are just super high quality, high gloss finish and great thematic artwork on them there. Uh, I'm kind of zoomed in here a little bit. I can zoom out for you. Uh, so lovely, lovely artwork, great packaging. But let's just talk about the core box. And so I, I just played this and had uh, started recording a video with the game uh, was at the end of the particular scenario. One thing led to another and we've got construction guys here and they started making a lot of noise with jackhammers and drills and things. And so I, I had to stop the video and this is my second attempt at trying to sort of give you a, a quick overview of the gameplay and what I think about the little system here. As you all probably know, I am not a huge minis guy and I don't really paint things and uh, I, I'm fascinated by, by miniatures and by uh, systems that use them and all that sort of good stuff, but I've managed to avoid that rabbit hole. Uh, this particular game is interesting because I had played way back in the day uh, there was a game called Wooden Ships and Iron Men, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. And I actually had never played that, but always was fascinated by it. And I'd played one other fleet minis game on a concrete patio floor with about half a dozen guys and had a great experience with that. So I really not touched naval gaming in any way, shape or form for a long, long time until about four or five years ago when I actually did play Wooden Ships and Iron Man and loved it enormously, had a great time with it, with a buddy of mine. And so I pulled this out and I was like, okay, well, you know, it's got little minis, we'll, we'll see, well, you know, what? I'm not really, honestly, not really expecting very much from the game because the rules were pretty light. Uh, and it was, uh, you know, it, I'm, I'm not a big Age of Sail guy either. So I thought, well, why not set up Blackbeard's Revenge, use, uh, use this module, grab uh, uh, one of Blackbeard's ships and put a Spanish galleon out. And I opened up the, the map, put some shoals in there. They've got this fantastic terrain that you can put on the map. And, you know, you do it just like a, t a typical miniatures game where each guy gets to put, uh, each player gets to put one, you know, a piece down and then they put a piece down and there's spacing rules and things like this. And there's little shoals here and uh, islands and you can land on the islands and have landing parties and all sorts of groovy stuff like that, right? So anyway, so I just want to do an ambush and ended up uh, having a blast with this because the gunnery systems and the way the rules work, I really just literally did a quick skim of the rules uh, and grab the dice and you get these, where is the cards for the ships? Just bear with me because I've got this all packed up here. Where are my little shippy dudes? Let's see if I can find one real quick. Oh, here we go. So, nope. Where is Blackbeard's card? We can't find him. Bear with me for a second. You allocate an admiral, so you're gonna, you know, choose admirals for each side depending on what country you're playing. And there's little rain, little movement markers. We'll talk about those in a second. Where did I put all of? And then you you have a hand that you're gonna play uh, that have. Uh, well, these are these are different, but you're gonna. There are events, and there are hand, you have a hand with initiative. Numbers, where are they? Here's, here's, uh, here's one of uh, teachers, Blackbeard teaches uh, Admiral cards. He gets special abilities, of course. And then you get these activation 
initiative numbers with events on them that you play for each card you flip. You go through a cycle of five cards, uh, creates a turn, and here's the cards. <laughs> that was difficult. So here's the Queen Anne's Revenge, the Revenge, and this was the Light Galleon, and he had a, an escort as well. And you just you look at this thing, you look at your ship, and you uh, you're going to set your your speed that you're going to travel at, and uh, you've got your little movement stick. So whoever gets initiative gets to move. So if I had a speed of, bear with me here, we'll grab the different speed markers. So if I've got a speed of three, yep, let me just uh, adjust the camera. It's a high quality professional uh, outfit here at the, at the at Big Board Gaming. So speed of three, up I go to there. If I'm turning, I can turn once. But if I'm, a, you know, a special pirate, I might get to turn twice, right? So I'll, I'll get to make a, se a second turn, right? So uh, that's your movement uh, situation. When you're trying to shoot at each other and fire cannons, you can, depending on the position you're in, based on the wind and all the rest of it, you may make a raking shot. You can choose to shoot at the sails uh, or you can just fire up directly. And, of course, with this uh, firing measuring stick, if I'm... You know super close so I'm putting this here if I'm at this range then that's uh, you know basically handgun and uh, handgun range then musket range and then you've got your cannon range which which is quite the distance right uh, you can see right that we can we can be really be plinking at each other quite a bit now the nice thing here is that when you do shoot you're gonna grab a little marker um, well, you move after you've moved. You, this is how you denote that you've moved. You get a little wake marker, and I'm trying to find the the shot cloud for us so that we know when we've fired, and then we've got to reload. Here it is. Here, so the let's say the Queen Ant, the the Revenge fired, and we know that they've spent their ammunition, and there's events that will allow you to do another quick shot or uh, a quick reload, as the case may be. So all sorts of fun things there so thematically on the board i've got these you know rather nice minis and i imagine if you painted these up they look even better right i of course just did the fiddly bits and put them together and that's it uh you've got a very simple combat system that relies on just these uh, marked up dice right so you can uh, depending on the range you're at and what you're firing you're going to uh, either do critical hits or your cannons are going to do damage and then what that's going to do, uh, if you get critical hits, you're just going to roll another die. And uh, you're going to see, you're going to, depending on what, the, what, what that result is, what uh, marker, what icon comes up, you're then going to receive a uh, incremental critical damage. But basically all you're trying to do here is accumulate fatigue for the enemy on their ship based on the number of hits you do. And then once you get to seven hits, then you're starting to do damage to the ship based on uh, based on uh, multiples of this number here, right? Each each time you receive damage, your capacity to shoot goes down. Uh, so if I've got uh, if I'm shooting cannons at range, I'm going to roll five dice. If I've taken some uh, taken some hits, some hits, that's going to go down to four, et cetera, et cetera, right? And so super straightforward. I got into this thing straight away. Had a whole bunch of fun. Got the uh, the ship uh, got you know, across because this galleon moves super slow, so it's moving one, right? So you can imagine as it, it, I'm, I'm moving this far versus this far, or faster depending on uh, the wind direction and uh, your sails. You have battle sails and full sails, and, or you can drop anchor. Uh, so I actually dropped anchor right here and just blasted it away at the front of the galleon, and then uh, brought the second ship up, and we. Uh, we got entangled and then we were able to do the boarding on the ship and had a blast at, uh, capturing that, right? So super uh, fast playing, number one. So I'll be able to uh, maybe even get my 20-year-old to get in on this with me and we'll have a little bit of fun. Uh, as you all know, those that follow the channel, I'm 
um, in between homes at the moment and we're, we're living in a sort of restored barn and this is about my table space. I've got one, one large table here that I share uh, as a dining room table and an office. Uh, so it's uh, very cramped, but this, you know, this map obviously falls out significantly larger and it's very attractive too because it, it's actually got that high gloss on it and, and if you get the, the lighting just right, it makes it look like you've got that glint coming off the sea. It's actually kind of cool. I, I didn't... At first, I was like, ah, there's so much glare, this is annoying. Then I stopped and looked at it and went, hmm, uh, these, these little uh, bright uh, flecks of, you know, what is supposed to be waves or, or sunlight glistening off the water actually give you this nice theme, right? This nice thematic feel to it. So lots of fun. Uh, we, I, I think I can get him to, to play some of this with me because you can literally play a quick little uh, engagement, naval engagement with a couple of ships uh, in probably 30, 45 minutes, depending on uh, how comfortable you are with the rules. So a big surprise for me, really enjoyed it. The rule book uh, is very straight, <clears throat> excuse me, very straightforward, full color, explains everything there's only one thing there's only one sort of niggle i had here was that there was supposed to be potentially and maybe I, I either something was missing out of my system or or maybe i am misreading something here there's supposed to be markers to capture the capture some damage here uh and i'm not sure which ones they were necessarily uh you can certainly show that you're shaken uh sorry shaken or crippled but there weren't markers to put against the, <clears throat> uh, where's the, I can't find the ship card now, where'd it go? Uh, against the fatigue and the, uh, and the uh, damage, there, there were not, I couldn't see markers to sort of keep track of that. So I just used shaken markers, there are plenty of those, and I assume that's what you're supposed to do <clears throat> and keep them stacked up there. Uh, you can rec obviously recover the fatigue and recover damage by uh, taking what you have one action you can take. Uh, and then uh, you can choose to either, you know, fire or, uh, or repair things or recover fatigue as the case may be. So beautiful artwork through all this. Nice examples. Great straightforward, like I said, really easy uh, rules system here. So there are seamanship actions that you can... Uh, execute changing your heading and getting into and out of the wind and across the wind and then you go through the attack phase then do the cleanup uh, uh in the end phase and that's it see look at that uh these guys look great when they're all painted up look at that so cool all right I, i've waffled on enough about this firelock games bit uh pleasant surprise clean light rule book played nicely Fantastic components with the event cards and all the different uh, admirals' skills and capabilities, and the the ship. The differentiation in the ships is make, makes it interesting for you to be able to uh, pull together different situations. I imagine if you wanted to, you could uh, set up uh, multiple ships and have uh, you know recreate the Battle of Trafalgar or whatever the case may be. If you really want to do that, I think there's the potential for that. I haven't explored it that far. Like I said, I've got one gameplay through. I'm going to be posting a, a blog post on bigboygaming.com. Uh, that'll be a little narrative write-up. I obviously have uh, a certain Jack Sparrow in my head when I was playing uh, thematically, so I had lots of fun with that. I, I promise not to make reference to... Uh, uh, peg leg people and and uh, uh, birds on shoulders, but I will be writing up my uh, my little adventure that I had with the scenario. Uh, that's one of the nice things about games like this; they they evoke and present a lot of uh, narrative fun. So anyway, Okanai, and there you go, Firelock Games. Uh, thanks very much for sending it to me. It was a complimentary copy, uh, and uh, I've got my one little play here, and we'll be. Uh, It'll be hitting the table again soon, I hope. All the best. Uh, roll those dice, right? Even if they do have cute little uh, characters on them. Ciao.